Welcome back to this Omori Music tier list. This is the second part and this time, this Omori Music tier list will make you vibe. Starting strong with A Home for Flowers, Empty Version. I said previously that I love all versions of this song, however, this version is the weakest. Why? It's in the title, Empty. This is the soulless version, with a smaller orchestration and less musicality. But I still love this song. This time we partially see the true nature of Basil. He is no longer that happy little boy that we saw in the dream world. He is now that empty boy. So far so good. What's next? Okay, I'll retract that. What the f is that? What is going on? Oh, right. It's this time. Arachnophobia. The first phobia part, it was really something. So for the second time, we lose the surprise effect. However, this piece managed to transcribe the fear of spiders. In terms of sound design and in the frequencies used, you really have the sound of a spider crawling at your feet. Can we leave the spooky zone now? The heart of the desert. Finally, we can vibe! Do you remember harmonic works in finding shapes in the clouds? Well, it is back! Like the previous song, it is interesting, but still medium compared to the whole soundtrack. Worth a B. Oh, that's cute! That's a B. Oh, I hate that! See, by the way, it encapsulates perfectly the feeling of being pranked. And I still hate that. An archaic resonance. This is just great! We find a neat structure similar to Stardust Diving. And percussion is the highlight of this song. Just something... Are we still in other world? Though the high sweeps down effect, this modern kick, this constant reverb, the aesthetics of this piece are closer to space than to an archaeological site. I don't know. Maybe it's a spatial archaeological site. But according to the game, it's more related to the food pyramid. Nevertheless, it's a solid A. That's a good song, but it should be before the previous one. Anyway, those who forget history. That's a good song battle, but kinda repetitive. There is just a drums break at the second part. At any moment. Here. It's between A and B, but I'm too scared of this fandom. So, A. And it starts again. Tumbleweeds. If most of you will remember the reunion of Kel and Hector, this song reminds me of the Seacow Farm with the old farmer Jim and this wow. funny spinning squizzard. This song fits pretty well with these two events, so it's a solid B. Powerfly Forest, Cat's Cradle. This is the longest song of this soundtrack. 4 minutes and 27 seconds. Honestly, you could repeat the same loop of a song several times and give yourself the title Longest Song of this Soundtrack. But it's not the case here. It's much more. Sure, this song repeats itself three times and the force is incomplete. And that's not seven loops, because there is a variation that looks like the same harmonic grid, but missing the first four bars. You follow me? Good! As you can see, 
the song manages to make you lost in its repetitiveness. Because some parts look the same, but are not, like a tree in a forest. Now add a few moments of clarity, like some drones and some melodic variation, and you'll find things you never knew were lost in the first place. Excellent atmosphere on this song. Forest Frenzy Oh, now we are vibing! This mix of piano and high chip tune sound gives a very unique aspect of this piece. A very soft melodic lead that tickles our ears from right to left and this soft minimalist drum brings unexpected comfort during a fight. A great relief since you have to fight spiders, kite kid and a freaking bear! A tier. Sweet Paralysis. The title is scarier than the song. Sure, it's a bit spooky for a 12 years old. I don't know if it's a good comparison, but Chaos Assembly has more energy to spare, and the unexpected was more frightening. Too bad for you, it's a C. Oh snap, the show will begin. How sad. Okay, I like this song, but the harpsichord kinda ruins this moment. How tragic. Okay, now it's better. Electric organ is always a good pick for this kind of song. Did you miss to vibe a little? I do. Splintered sweets in the castle. That's pretty good. And that's Bowen's second song in this soundtrack. Honestly, I didn't expect him to make this one. It's great and homogeneous to this castle part, but maybe too kind compared to what he used to do. Still an A, because the second part is sick. Wandering Wars. This song perfectly represents a ballroom. That swaying bass on every bar, always moving like a dance for two. Looking at the grid, you may think this piece is unstable. But this is an amazing vault that deserves an A. Stationary Rose. A nerf version of the previous song. The forte of the piano and the bass is missing, leaving rooms for violins and pizzicatos. This rhythmic instability causes it to lose some points. B. Valor against all odds. Now to put things straight. Omori and Undertale started their Kickstarter at the same time. By lucky accident, they got to know each other. At the end, Omocat inspired one character design in Undertale and Toby Fox made a jukebox song in Omori. So maybe the composers were inspired by Undyne theme? Or maybe it's just a coincidence? After all, this game seems to draw from the same inspiration, like Earthbound, Final Fantasy and Humaniki. In conclusion, Omori and Undertale are very different, and it's a very good thing. Now back to the song. Definitively a banger with a 3-4 time signature, the subdominant modulation, and this catchy rhythmic pattern. Also such a genius way to reuse this song. Three times in all. Four times? Oh yeah, there is Nile. Anyway, that's a S tier song. We are approaching the end of the Sweetheart arc. You are not ready for the next song. 
Words and Valentine. Not a fan of Sweetheart, but I have to admit, this song slaps. This intro with two octave harpsichords in each ear sets the tone. And then BPM change. As a big fan of Savant, I have always loved this mix of harpsichord and EDM. Holy shit, it goes hard! You may ask, why every final pass song are a banger? Well, remember Space Boyfriend theme? History repeats itself. Every good element of Sweetheart Castle is here. The bass of Wandering Rose, the orchestration of Sweetheart Castle instruments, and of course, this obnoxious harpsichord. I have no other choice but to give it an S for Sweetheart. Speaking of Space Boyfriend, mm, let's just move on to the next song. Lost the Library. This quiet piano version of Powerfly Forest is the best way to wind down. After all that happened, I've already talked enough about Powerfly Forest, so I'll just give an A. We finally did it. We are halfway through this Omori music tier list. Thrifted Chochi Church Keys? Ah, oh, that's it. Thrifted Church Keys. Ah, oh, finally, what the hell is this title? That's definitively Kel vibing here. It's fun, catchy, and groovy. I hate this title, but I like this song. Swirly 1000X. The violent drums are back. That means one thing. Aubrey and her gang are here to beat you up. At first glance, this song doesn't sound better than the first time you saw Aubrey. But at the second part, it goes wild. It clearly reminds me of another song, but we haven't ranked it yet. Just gonna say number 116. A strong A for Aubrey. Dear little brother, You find yourself in a submerged area, represented by this constant, medium, drone. And then, this reassuring piano, playing Mary theme. It's like she's still here, telling you to not worry. I just wish this song was played when she said to you, Goodbye, little brother. But no, you must first overcome your fears. Thalassophobia. Starting this by saying, I have thalassophobia. I almost died once by drowning. So I won't dwell long on this song, just saying it's a repetition of arachnophobia and the end of this piece, supposed to represent the surface of the water, hurt the ears like air pressure. It's too realistic, I don't like it. Now we can move on. Hanging with the boys. I want to take this moment to say how much I appreciate Hero in Omori. It took me two playthroughs to realize he's just the best character in this game. Hero from Dreamworld is kinda boring, no offense. But Hero from Real World is so handsome, so positive. How? He lost his soulmate. Mary, also one of my favorite characters. They were the perfect couple. 
And that's why this game is so tragic. Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. Hero deserves all the love in the world. Oh. Welcome back to White Space. This version sound so much better. However, the piano is a bit hesitant, showing the progression of Sonny's mental state as he gets closer to the truth. Origin Ah yes, I missed having my ears bleeding by a high-pitched whistle. Still sounds better than the first white space version. We are now entering the underwater area. Game design is crazy. I'm sure 99% of the people click on the boombox to play the song. The last resort. Can't believe Sonny made this area out of a blackjack game from his computer. I like this song, also the title, The Last Resort. I feel like this could be the last comfort zone before going any further. Not so empty house. Did you miss some harmony grid? Well, here's one. As you can see, we find again that swaying bass on every bar from Wandering Rose. That means we are facing again a waltz. It's a music style we find several times in this game, like the main theme. And it's for a good reason. This piece is beautiful. We visualize the ghost perfectly without it being cliché. With these artificial voices, these retro drums and some light drone to clarify this piece. Honestly, it's between A and S. It's a ghost dance. Okay, now this version? I feel like this song could be composed by Toby Fox. We are closer to his instrumental aesthetic. I know he made a jukebox song, but it is not in this tier list. However, this one is a gem. And the scene is so heartwarming. To see Omori and Aubrey dancing together at a ghost party, while Kel and Hiro are supporting them. I'm a little bit hesitant. Oh, fuck it, it's S tier. Why there is a ball pit in this room? Gator Gamble. It's the perfect song to win some clan or to lose some. Right, Kel? Quite chill for a battle song. And at the beginning, some audio chop to give rhythm to this song. I give it an A. No more jokes. Jawbreaker. Okay, the title is clever, but the song disappoint me a little. I mean, it's good, but for a battle boss, it's pretty medium. Sure, we didn't have a lot of jazzy songs in this soundtrack. However, I'm not into it. Maybe I was expecting something like Duke Ellington style. A more catchy rhythm, more structured orchestration, like a big band. Also, the cheap instruments doesn't help with the ranking. I am not afraid to face the consequences. That's a B. Okay, can we move on to a true battle? Boss? Golden Vengeance. I didn't comment much on the first time. Most of you encounter Pluto to focus on this song. As if it wasn't enough to fight a shark. Now you're fighting a whole planet. And that's why we love Omori. It goes from psychological horror to the most absurd scene possible. The song uses the same harmonic grid as the vengeance of those forgotten in darkness. 
but the time is multiplied by two. This is really a good representation of the expansion as you are fighting expand the Pluto. In addition, a special orchestra reminiscent of the fight against Space Boyfriend and you have a banger. Huge S for this song. I'm starting to lose my voice so we will calm down a bit. Squall. I don't know what to say about this song. It sounds like a bad version of Gato Gambor. Some cool ideas, but it remains flat. Probably the weakest fight song on the soundtrack. Oh! Now we are approaching one of my favorite underrated parts of this game. Numbers. Now that's some serious cryptic shit right there. There is really a mysterious and creepy atmosphere in this song. I analyzed it and tried everything, but found nothing. Some kids say numbers in German as a workout to pass messages. And that's it. I feel like this song sounds like how liminal space feels. Also, this could be part of Sonny's unconscious, trying to confuse his mind, so he doesn't find the truth, yet. It's interesting, but nothing concrete. And now... Sinking. Literally cheers listening this. A heavy atmosphere, as if you were going to make an important choice and to your second playthrough it hit harder because you know this is not the first time you're here all these little one on the floor are basil and the number of little one represents the number of time the dream world has reset and the number of time you turn away from the truth and now it's your last chance to really save Basil and all of your friends, not those of dreams, but those of reality. H2O HCL. Some must believe that I usually give the music of a place a B, the music of a battle an A, and the music of a boss, an S. That's definitively not the case. Sure, we give more importance to a boss battle than to a place, because the boss represents a key moment in a game. But as you have noticed, I attach a lot of importance to the atmosphere a music can give. And sometimes the boss battle song is not that good. Now about this song, it has the vibe of an old-school RPG Maker horror game. Well, that's oddly specific. Some examples of this. Here we are from Undertale. The main theme of Corpse Party Chapter 2 and Snow World from Humaniki. What's great about these games is that horror doesn't have to be just jump scare on jump scare. It's all about the atmosphere. A. The same applies to chemistry on and on. Here we have a more rhythmic song with this percussive instrument playing ping pong with your ears and these homorhythmic melodies at the second part. It really gives the atmosphere of a laboratory with the sound of machines doing Things? B. But I wanna see it all with you! Is a sped up version of Are We Catch Up that underwent the same treatment as Stardust Dusting. With this yeah and who samples, rumor says these are hero screams as he descends rivers on the raft. Another B. 
Grimy, a basic battle song, but in this context it works, nothing crazy, just this pulsing kick and bass that set the tone of this music. In my opinion, a better version of Sweet Paralysis, and it's not even a boss battle theme. And another B. Oh oh. Banger alert! Underwater prom queens. Starting smoothly with this calm intro, just like Sweetheart's song. The time signature of the intro is in 3 4, while the core of this song is in 4. Oh no, they are hot! <laughs> Speaking of these characters, you may have noticed. The theme of Space Boyfriend is composed by Jamie Lynn, and the theme of Slime Girls is composed by Pedro Silva. Because these are the ovary persona. I talked about a song that has similarities with Swirly 1000X, and it's this song, number 116. We also find a similar situation. A group of bullies trying to take your money. No, but seriously, there is also some part of Words and Valentine, Chaos Assembly, and spoiler, some part of Humphrey and Perfect Heart. Oh shit, it's hot! A perfect second part that gives you a boost. We fear the ingenuity of the sisters in this banger, created with the best parts of the game they can found. This is not the ultimate battle boss song, but it's very good and deserves an S. Well, well, well. Time to feast, time to feast, time for you to be diseased. I think the first dialogue of this fight is meant to be sung with the theme? Or is it just me? Anyway, we switch from grimy stability with these kicks and bar in the strong beat to this weird clave that stays in one ear and changes every four bars. We also find the melody of Slime Girls, which is normal since Humphrey swallows the Slime Girl. What the f? This is a B. But the next song. Swallow Hollow. Wow, this is getting dark. There is an uncanny feeling during this boss battle. It doesn't look like a boss from the world of dreams, but the world of nightmares. We are at the border between Sonny's dream and subconscious. According to the game, Humphrey is the oldest in this world and has lived for so long that he lost his sense of morality and became a parasite. It's a distorted version of the previous song and a good example of what awaits us in black space. Some will not agree, but I find this piece successful for the atmosphere and the lore. A. Hey. Grass. Hey, that's the song! That one! And this time it's some mermaids! But what was the title of this song again? And that's the end of the second part of this Omori music tier list. A pretty intense video considering that we covered almost two days of the game. The next video will be the last. In addition to optional quests and the Hikikomori route, we will finally finish the game. If you liked this video series, consider supporting me. You know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe and share. As a small YouTube channel, it helps a lot. And maybe this video will be recommended. Again, thanks to Kid Dreamzing for these Omori icons. Thanks to Minty Chu for this Omori music tier list. And thank you for watching this video. See you next week. See ya.